Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Whatever time you're watching this, as always, thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. So real quick, before we get into today's video, man, I've got so much stuff I want to talk about otherwise, other than fishing, but we're not going to do that to you guys on this channel. So please, if you're interested, go check out Common Sense Talks. I'll be cutting this live stream a little bit short tonight and jumping over there because I have some important things I want to talk about. So if you're new to the channel, I have two channels, Common Sense Fishing, Common Sense Talk. So if you're interested in hearing what I got to say uh, that isn't fishing related, go check out Common Sense Talks and uh, smash that subscribe for me. Check out my other videos if you'd like and uh, support the channel. But uh for the fishing ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, smash that like button. And if you're interested, go ahead and go check that out as well. But today uh, we've got some really cool fall tips and tricks to give you guys. Got some updated information. And I got two kind of really cool tips or tricks for you guys that not a lot of people know about or associate together. And we're gonna read a, a article. We're gonna talk about some personal experience and uh, we'll get into something um, that I'm not sure a lot of people um, even tie in or associate together. So, yo, yo, nice to see you on Curves tonight. <clears throat> yeah, I drink a little bit of water. I don't know if you guys can tell. I mean, it's still in my nose and my sinuses and my navel cavities. I'm just all like still a little <clears throat> stuffed up. So I was sick for like a week. It was brutal. <laughs> I don't think I did any live streams last week, right? You know? But yeah, some cool tips for you guys. So as the name, uh, the title says tonight, bass and tarantulas. What the hell do bass and tarantulas have uh, like to do with each other? I'm sure bass will eat tarantulas, right? And... Um, you know, there is a tarantula lure you can buy uh, that definitely works. You know, people catch fish on them. So, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But we have some other reasons why to talk about tarantulas. Other than the fact that, of course, I just uploaded two videos, you know, kind of helping one across the road. And then another one was kind of headed for the road. But they looked like they were the, <laughs> headed for each other. So it kind of steered them clear of the road. And uh, shot a little video for the YouTube shorts. So it has nothing to do with that. Um, and we'll save that for a little bit. Got some really cool information for you guys. <clears throat> We're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite fishing techniques. And uh, why it's that time of year to throw it. And uh, have a great video for you guys tonight. So happy hump day. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hasn't got uh, mercolated too bad from... Uh, hard work week and you know we're halfway through it almost done in tgif of course we're gonna have a live stream friday hopefully another great one and uh have a good time as usual so <clears throat> yeah what's up <laughs> long time no talk brother yeah i want to see uh if we can get jeff we're going to try to get jeff on the show here so <clears throat> hey rc creative I've got a good one tonight. I've got two really cool tips that I think might help some people tonight. So I'm excited. I don't want to bury the lead. I don't want to jump the gun either. So I don't want to uh, give it all away right away. But uh, I got a cool show for you guys and gals. I think I got two things that a lot of people don't talk about this time of year. Um, actually, three things. Um, so super stoked for it. But in the meantime, you know, we'll have our little introduction get things over with like that uh the giveaway for november will probably be next week so either probably wednesday or friday um we got to get keeping it real and jeff garcia we got to get them to their uh gift card still so brian pritchard got his and um yeah so everybody's squared up except for we got to get them so i'm excited we're gonna have a good show tonight uh, i think it's gonna be a good week too I'm going to go do some work some more. I've been working in Fresno today, so I got home just in time to jump on for you guys. Um, also, uh, 
tomorrow I'm going to be doing some work in Fresno. So I'm excited. We got some bikes behind me. Talk about the toy drive tonight as well. So give me a second. I'm going to go close this door so we don't get too much outside interference or noise coming in. So I've got like a ton. Like I said, I've got like seven, I've got seven bikes now. Um, a ton of toys. So just super stoked to uh, do what we can. You know, we're not doing as good as we were last year on the toy drive. So hopefully that'll turn around. We've got a month basically or so before uh, Christmas. So, um, you know, that last week we don't do much more toy drive. It's just mostly wrapping and, and getting gifts like uh, situated and selected for the families because basically we have to get a list of how many kids what their ages and genders are and what um, what they want for christmas and then we try to best match everybody up what we can and uh not everyone gets what they want but we try to get them something close to what they would like or if we have what they would want then they get it so we try to fulfill every christmas wish that we can so we took care of over 200 kids last year we'll see what we could do this year so <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Going again tomorrow. You got to hunt for me. Heck, yeah. If I get up there, man, I got to get out there. And uh, I, I really would like to come visit, man. Um, I kind of talked to the wife the other night about it. You know, there's uh, I'm sitting there doing the, the dinner for the family and cooking. And I just hear just a whole clip get unloaded. And uh, right down the block, you know, dude got shot at the gas station. And then I go to use the restroom, of course, sitting on the toilet, and I pull out the phone. And, like, three stories is, like, someone got stabbed, someone got shot and killed, another person got shot, and then road rage on the freeway. I'm like, oh, my God, what is this world coming to? Anyway, so that kind of stuff, go check out my other channel, Common Sense Talks. We'll go on a rant tonight. So um, after this show, I'm going to go jump on my other channel, Common Sense Talks, and we're going to be talking about uh, a couple of – of, of things that are going on in the news right now, plus just like some current events with me and, uh, you know, just get into stuff that I don't want to talk about here on the fishing channel to bug you guys and gals with. So, but if you're interested in that, go check that out. Cause we're going to cut tonight's video a little short. So we're going to roll till probably like seven 30 or so. Then over there, we're going to jump on live and uh, hopefully we can get some of you guys and gals to come on over. But if not, it's cool. This is my fishing channel. So if you're fishing only, Hey, I'm more than happy to have you guys. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. And the best thing you guys can do to help the channel is if you're not subscribed, sub please subscribe. Uh, if you are subscribed and you see the videos, just leave a comment here and there. It really helps the algorithm. So anything we can do to help the channel get noticed more and hopefully grow. Um, hopefully do some really good things. And uh, if each year we're getting bigger and better, I can't wait to see what kind of fundraisers and things that the, the fishing community can pull together and do. I like to do tournaments for disabled kids and disabled adults and, and people that are uh, underfunded, that don't have uh, fishing gear or money, you know, a tournament of noobs and stuff like that, just all kinds of fun stuff. I'd like to get out there and support the community. So we'll see what we can do as we grow uh, together as a family. You know, this is a great fishing community. So shout out to everybody who's supporting the channel. Um, but yeah, so got a lot of lofty dreams, but we'll see what happens. Boats in the shop getting fixed. So I put my money where my mouth is for that. Going to make sure we get our tournament ready for next year. Um, I want to start putting together some better videos for you guys and gals. The way I can box my fish, the way I can uh, put a healthy limit together and uh, start showing you guys what we're doing, how we're doing it, and uh, take you guys along for a ride and make these uh, videos much more of a story, less so than just like a, hey, watch me catch fish. Um, also, quick uh, little shout out is I'm releasing a trout fishing video that will probably be coming out this Friday or or so for members only. And then I'll probably give you guys the weekend with it. And then Monday, I'll probably release it general. But uh, it's a trout fishing video. I tried, so there's a couple different uh, uh, 
point of views from the camera. I set the camera down and had a angle facing up at me and the shore and the beautiful skyline and part of the lake. And I catch a couple fish like that. I've got the camera on my head and I catch a couple fish like that. Three of the fish you catch from cast to catch, the bite, everything, hook set. Uh, two of them I turn on and start recording once they're hooked. They're all beautiful, lovely trout. Fun little video. I caught like five trout in under an hour. Um, and I gave them all away to the old Asian guys that were fishing on each side of me. You know, they eat them, take them home, feed their family with them. Uh, and the trout, a lot of them die once you catch them. So if they're in good condition, I'll let them go. But, um, you know, if they get throat hooked or if they bleed a lot, I try to give them away. Or I'll take them home and, and cook them. Uh, but when, you know, I'd prefer not to uh, cook trout just because of so many bones. So anyways, um there was a beautiful one caught too that almost looked like a brook trout. It had really purple markings on it and was spotted, but it was still looked like a rainbow. So we got that on video. I'm going to edit that all down, put that out. So that'll be its own separate video. And then I'm working on a collage of one fish trips where I went out and I only caught one fish. So I fished all day, busting my butt off, and I got one, maybe two fish. You guys don't usually see those videos. So we're going to kind of show you that fishing can be tough. Um, it's not always fun, but show you some of those times of me grinding through it, that when I do catch the fish, the excitement and the fun, you know, like, and, and then I can also go back and analyze, like, what was I doing when I caught that one fish versus why I didn't catch them the rest of the day. You can actually learn and get a little better like that. So it's a cool little thing, but uh, stuff we got coming. So Dominic on it. Uh, how long have you known Matt Frazier? Uh, so I've um, fished against him in the future pro tour in 2011 and 2012, but I wouldn't say like I knew him or he knew me like my buddy Bash Chaffel, and I were tournament partners, and we went to the Classic both years. We won a ton of uh, wood fishing in the small boat division. We whipped up all the big boats in a couple of tournaments, too. Earned a lot of those guys' respect. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, well, yeah, I would rather we catch more fish than not and then have a good video but if we have a tough one, I think it's important that I start releasing those videos. One, to produce content, but two, just to produce honest content. And then three, like sharing the experience too. So I'm doing a little more conversating with you guys while I'm out there fishing, talking about stuff, um, explaining stuff, just looking around quietly at the environment too and taking in the sights and sounds. So I'll try to avoid from boring you with like a reading rainbow LeVar Burton style fishing video, but I want to make sure I incorporate like, you know, some good shots, some nice peaceful parts of uh, the wilderness and also maybe uh, a few moments of my conversation with you guys, I guess. Right. So. Uh, yeah, especially when bank fishing pop, you know, that, you know, that's right. So I got a little trick for you guys tonight that I'm going to talk about. Thank you guys very much. So like I said, please smash that like button if you haven't already. Um, I'm going to be getting off a little early on this live stream because I'm going to jump over on Common Sense Talks and uh, rant and rave about some other stuff over there. I'm going to share the screen on that channel. So we're going to do a uh, web stream and I'll be in the little box and we're going to go check out some news stories, some things that the media is not talking about, a bunch of other cool stuff. And uh, I'll talk about some personal stuff, too. So if you guys are interested in that, we'll do that later. But for tonight, I've got an awesome fishing show for you guys and gals. I got a cool tip. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll start with one of them. And <clears throat> I guess uh, the, they'll all kind of tie into each other. So... Um, Buckle up. I think this one will help us this year. It helped me put a few fish in uh, the shore recently, bass fishing, kind of stressing and struggling. And uh, I don't have no fish finder. Shore fishing can be tough, can it, guys? So you get spoiled when you're in a boat. 
but uh it comes back to you it's just like riding a bike you know you you remove you're like ah oh, okay hey banana man rob t nice to see you on Woo-hoo. Yeah, i know every one of you guys man believe it or not i i recognize you i know your faces i know almost every one of my viewers and uh subscribers now it's pretty awesome so the members i know all you guys and gals uh so it's it's cool. I've been fishing. Rob P was on the boat with me when we seen the dude flip in the delta. So crazy. But yeah. All right. Um, so sorry to be all over the place, but uh we're gonna start with a, a tip that some people talk about. I, you know, I don't know if you hear a lot of people talking about it, but in the fall, <clears throat> hey barefoot bass, so nice to see you guys on. So um Everybody knows boats in the shop. We'll be doing a bunch of shore fishing. So I've got some shore fishing videos, a little recap, the trout video, Lake Yosemite, smashed them, had a bunch of fun. Um, we're going to start doing some videos where I'm only catching one or two fish. And some of them are from shore. Some of them are from the boat even. And I'm out there just having a good time talking to myself. So we'll just kind of edit it down so it's not ultra boring, but make it uh, a, a good insightful trip i guess you'd say and just also get a little bit of banter with me because i talk to the camera when i'm fishing by myself i don't put a lot of that in the videos but i talk to you guys constantly when i'm out there fishing i just when i'm sitting there on the cutting floor only so much of it makes it into the video right so i think that's going to change we're going to start trying to bring you in uh, on the fishing trip a little more personal let's say um so we'll see how that goes but we're going to do that stuff too so anyways one of tonight's tips we've got three i think that are awesome they're they're my i didn't go searching on the internet for these tips they're not other guys' videos tips although i'm sure people talk about this stuff um one of them is a light bulb moment that came to me that i've always known about i was like oh that'd be a perfect video to share with you guys so we're going to talk about uh, that in a minute here. First tip, though, first tip for you guys. So there's two types of seasons here. Hey, hey Mark Neb. So there's two types of seasons in California and in, in the West Coast and in our region. La Nina, El Nino. And they fish completely different. Four dry years, four wet years. You can have rain in the dry years. You can have dry spells in the wet years, but it's a general concept. Higher humidity levels during the wet years, more rain and more fog. In the dry years, less of all that. Higher temperatures, more sunlight, right? So you can still have plenty of uh, differences. Obviously, there's still four seasons, yada, yada. But there's basically two major weather patterns, El Nino, La Nina. And we cycle through them, and it's not always that they're religiously switching every four, but that's the general way the jet stream switches and how our little weather pattern here switches. I'm not a meteorologist, but okay. So in all of those years, they still, this happens every fall. But each, I guess you would say, in each setup, how it happens, when it happens, and how intense it is can be a little different, right? And so in a dry year during the fall, the lakes are usually still falling, right? In the uh, fall, in the dry year, the temperatures might be a little warmer it, up until a certain point. And then because there's no cloud cover, it gets really cold, but there's no rain, right? Then the temperatures get really cold. Now, you know the old saying, when the lake is dropping, the fish pull off, right? So in dry year falls, the fish can be really hard to catch. They'll pull out. They can suspend over 300 feet of water and 50 or 60 feet of water. They may be over 80 feet of water. They could be over 40 feet or 20 feet of water, but they're usually suspended hard as hell to catch, right? They can be tricky. Now, in, in my opinion, in a wetter season, you're going to have cloud cover, so you don't get as many freezing nights. You're going to get more humidity. Um, barometric pressure is going to be slightly different uh, than, let's say, if it was the same temperature, um, but, you know, a dry night. So you're going to have some differences. Now, um, 
what happens every fall, so I'm kind of building into this tip, is almost the same thing as what happens every spring. So summer and winter are like opposites, right? You have summer, it's really hot. Winter, it's really cold. You could call them like up and down, right? They're polar opposites, right? And spring and fall are, are the exact same thing. They're, they're opposites, but in a sense, they're almost the same thing. So what happens is, is, is as the sun, as we're going around the sun and, it, and, and, and it's doing, you know, uh, it, it's tilted to us a certain way. When it's in the summer, it's hotter, right? And then... Well, it started at the winter time. It's winter, it's cold, the days are less, the light's less, and the sun is tilted away from us, right? And then as we start to approach it and and it gets to the spring, it's, the days get longer, the days get warmer, the water warms up, right? And it's two different factors. Of, if you go walk back and watch my live streams and my videos, I've always talked about this, two major factors. Everyone talks about water temperature. But the light, how light it is, the fish are almost like plants. You know, you can set a plant into a vegetative cycle by how many hours of light you're getting, or you can force it to flower at any time you want by cutting the light to a certain set hours. And animals and humans and fish and all that were very sensitive to the light. You know, when there's 14 hours, 16 hours of sunlight, you know, you know you're in summer or you're in a warm period, but when there's only like feels like there's only nine, 10 hours of sunlight, 11 hours of sunlight, you know you're in the winter period or a cold period, right? And these animals, fish know the same thing. So water temperature and light and is very, very important, right? So follow me along. In the spring, the water temperature hits a certain temperature and the light is at such an how many hours a day, it turns into spawn. The fish know to naturally move up shallow and to start trying to spawn, find a partner to do the whole thing, right? And then when they're done, you go into the summer and they're off chasing bait fish and moving around. And then and then into the, they may go off deep. They may be right up in one foot of water, but they're scattered. They're all over. They're moving around. Fall, they start congregating and they start feeding up for winter. But at that special moment, when the light outside is the same about as it is in the spring and the water temperature starts cooling to about the same as it is in the spring, especially on that full moon, the bass will do what's called a false spawn. Bass do not spawn twice. Regardless of what anyone says, bass do not produce eggs twice. A female bass, it'd be a freak of nature. They do, they do not. Whatever anyone says, that's a lie. Fish biology 101, they do not spawn twice. However, they do what's called a false spawn. All, hey, nice to see you on Jesus. So all the instinct in those fish's bodies is telling them to spawn, but they don't have the actual eggs. So what will happen is, Yes, big old fat females will come up and they'll even make beds sometimes in the in a false spawn and they'll partner up and they'll hang out shallow and they won't they, they may even look like they're spawning but there's no eggs there's no there's no nothing going on. They'll go through most of the routine and then when it's kind of done or when the when the water cools enough and the light gets dark enough and they back off and start heading into that winter mode, right? Or back into the fall transition into the winter. So one big thing is false spawn. And when that especially ties in with if you have a wet year, instead of the lake dropping and the fish needing to be pulled off, the lake is usually staying steady or raising just enough because you're getting fresh rainwater in. No snow, no snow melt, right? So not massive amounts, but I mean, even if it's just a little bit of water over every mountain, over every area, collects and runs down and then comes into that lake, right? If it's anywhere near that, water's gonna run downhill and fill the lake up. So when the lake is rising, regardless of time of year, 
usually the fish are going to push up shallow. Couple that with the false spawn when the temperatures and everything starts getting right, they even more will start coming up shallow. Now, my second or third tip is going to even double or triple on that. So we're going to talk about what the hell do tarantulas and bass have in common? And I was just realizing, you know what? The tarantulas come out every year in the fall, right? They do the same thing. So unlike bass the, in, the, in doing it in the spring, the tarantulas will actually mate in the fall. That's when they'll actually go out and they'll start looking for mates. And they come out of the woodworks and they're everywhere. And they'll be crossing the roads left and right. They'll be walking all around and they're kind of slow, just do 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 do, taking their time. And they're looking for each other, right? The male's looking for a female, vice versa. So <clears throat> when you see that, that should give you a reminder that the bite is almost most likely 100% switching from. And you can probably still catch them all schooled up on bait fish and stuff like that. Switching from that offshore suspended stuff, LV 500 blade baits, whatever, drop shots out into 50 feet of water, whatever. It's going to start pulling up. And that's going to switch back to like a spawn type bite. Now, if any of you fish in the spawn, you remember sometimes you're seeing those fish and them seeing you and being right there and you cast your lure and they look at it. They get interested and they kind of watch it and they follow it, but they don't bite. And sometimes it can be stressful getting them to bite. You almost have to hit them or you have to put the bait on the bed. As soon as the bait goes on the bed, the male attacks it, right? So same thing can happen during the fall spawn. Slow down a little bit, but you can fish a little bit, a lot shallower. Start shallow right now is my main point. Now I'm going to tie all this in together. So again, what do the tarantulas have to do with it? The tarantulas can be a sign that it's time that the that, that Mother Nature is spawning again, right? And that, or not necessarily spawning, but it's like doing almost the same thing that it did in the spring. But in some things, it's doing it in like reverse, right? The trees start losing their leaves instead of gaining and budding their flowers. They actually start dying and losing it, right? But a lot of creatures and animals, especially, that um, just like in the spring, when all the conditions are similar, when the fall is similar to the spring, when the temperatures aren't freezing, but they're not that hot anymore, not in the 70s consistently or even in the 80s for a few days, but consistently like spring temperatures, all the animals start doing their fall mating, right? The ones that do. And fish, they don't mate. They don't actually spawn, but they do a fall spawn. Now, here's what I'm getting at with the tarantulas. That's not just why you need to worry about tying them in. A, you know, you probably could catch some, some bass on tarantulas since they're out so much. There might be a few in the water, but I, that's not what I'm talking about. So what else comes out besides the tarantulas? All right, so I'm going to read a little... little uh, a little a little excerpt from a uh, famous bass magazine right so just like in early spring when the water temps rise above 48 degrees in the fall when water temps fall into the upper 40s the crawfish will begin a second mating cycle during this time the crawfish will crawl out from under the rocks and expose themselves for bass to gorge on. So you have perfect conditions. You have the water levels are rising right now, so the bass will push shallower. The water temperatures and the sunlight and the moonlight is getting perfect time for a false spawn, which will also push the fish up. And the crawdads will start coming out of their holes to do their fall mating. Not all of them. The spring is when the majority of them mate during the spring, but they also mate during the fall. And crawdads, it's an actual live, real mating, not a false one. And even if it was a false one, the idea is the same thing. 
everything is out right now, up shallower. So right now is a time to, if you're going to power fish, if you want the big fish, you can probably still get schools of little fish out deeper, offshore. You may get your occasional monster like that. But there's going to be a lot of fish that are up doing basically a fall spawn, foraging in fresh water, and going after the exposed crawdads. And the tarantulas is your sign as the fisherman that that time of fall is here. It's one of the best signs. When the leaves start changing colors, basically right around Halloween, as soon as Halloween comes to even sometimes late November. Once you get past a certain extent, though, it's like it's all done and said and over with. It gets to what if once it gets too cold, then it churns into that winter pattern. Everything slows down, goes back into their holes, hidey holes, you know, boom, whatever, not hibernating, but things just slow down for the winter, right? So with that being said, right now is that perfect time for shore fishermen to get out there and throw a crankbait, but move it real slow. It's not, it, it, it's going to be slightly different than the spring. It's the fall bite. However, everything should be pushing up shallower than 20 feet or so, I'd say. 25 feet all the way up to one foot of water. This is also a good time to switch back to a jig. So this is also a time to start fishing rocks and start fishing anywhere where you notice you've seen a lot of crawdad holes the little circle holes, and as the water full, fills up, you're really going to want to be fishing in that area with jigs. So if you know your lake, if you know areas that have a ton of those circle little holes, those are crawdad little holes, and uh, go over to those areas and, and start pitching jigs. So you can find those in areas that have rock and red clay especially. So if you start noticing the, the dirt and the ground's kind of red, and you have some rock, but you have some mucky mud or some clay, they'll usually mm -hmm. leave a little bit of a, if you get a, a, a chop or waves, they create that real red mud line on that kind of shore. Great to throw a jig in. So big rocks, little rocks, medium rocks, and rocks with, with uh, red, red clay. Basically, anywhere you, you can see the little crawdad hidey holes, Remember, the crawdads are out doing their false, or they're doing the real spawn right now. The bass should be out doing a false spawn, if not already, or doing it soon. And this is the time to fish shallower. However, because it's fall, because it's not quite the same as the spring bite, it's not going to be the same. You're not going to necessarily just be able to cruise around shoreline and pick fish off because in the fall, you get a lot of wind usually. You get a lot of wind in the spring too, but in the fall you get a lot of wind. And it's not like every single bass is coming up to spawn because they're full of sperm and eggs, but you do have the same general like urges happen to a fish. And I think when, especially when you have a La Nina or El Nina year where you have a, a wet pattern and you're seeing fog, and you're seeing cloud cover and rain, that's a good sign in my opinion. And that means that you might be able to extend that a little bit. So get out there, throw those jigs. Um, also, whatever else works, but it depends on your fishery. But throw those jigs, bottom balancers, and fish shallow all the way down to, say, 20, 25 of course, there's probably still going to be suspended fish, schooling fish, and all that stuff. But my point is, is this is the time of year you should see the bass candy start coming out. So keep your eyes peeled. Look for that. You know, start tossing the jig. Uh, crawl your jig on the rocks. Don't be popping it and moving it around too fast. It's not the summer. So take your jig and, and, and instead of using more hopping motions, I would use more of a dragging motion just to mimic one kind of falling off a rock and then scooting around like on its own, like they're walking, you know, and you feel that little as the bass just sucks it up. 
bam, gotta love a jig bite. You know, it's it's uh it's awesome. Even when they barely bite, you just you can feel it because that jig's so heavy. You just feel the and then even though the jig's heavy in this big old head, crawdads are bony big creatures, you know. Bass is gonna suck that thing up. It's gonna take a second before it realizes. So it's not usually shouldn't be a, a hit it and spit it. But if you notice, you're getting a hit and spit type of bite. So this is another little trick. During this time, you may notice you may get bit a lot. And you may have a bad hookup ratio. If those fish are attempting to like attack and wound the thing and then eat it, you might have to wait for a, 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 a what would you say, a where the fish is committed, a committed bite versus more of an attack or a peck, right? And um, if that's the case, an LV500 in a crawdad color with soft little, let it sit there. That's my little special technique, my little wintertime hop. That will, what happens is, is when the bass just peck at that and you feel that, you just start reeling like a, like a drop shot you just lift up and reel and you use a high speed reel so you can really pick up speed with that thing and once it's hooked then you can use your skill to fight the fish using your thumb on the spool if you're using this is one thing i do is i use a seven six rod so this is a big old giant rod and it's very sensitive though because it's so long and it's got a fast action tip but it's medium heavy and so I can feel a, a, a 10 inch or six inch bass come up and just kiss my lure. I can feel it like a little, just doesn't feel right. I can, I can feel the, the actual little nick. I can, it's hard to explain, but I can feel it without braid, without any of that crap. I use fluoro. So then what happens is when I feel that, I immediately just trust that I had a bite and I just lift up and start reeling. And if the fish ain't there, I just stop and let it go down again. Because you'll be a feel when your LV hits the ground, how it feels. And anything, any little nick that ain't quite right, it's a fish, trust me. They don't always just smash your LV 500. I have caught so many four or five pound bass on an LV 500 that bit smaller than a bluegill. Like, I'm talking a little aggressive bluegill. Yeah, you feel it. Du -du -du. Du -du -du. I'm talking just like literally, like just the, it's crazy. Hard to explain. So anyways, if you're having a hard time nailing them with a jig, try an LV500. Toss it right up in a foot of water. Hop that thing down real slow. And you'd be surprised. You work it just like a jig. Don't drag it. <laughs> little hops, very little. So just... <clears throat> and what happens is, is with a jig, you may want to do that dragging motion, move real slow. The LV500, even though you may want to drag it, you'll snag up, right? So the little hops, that mo that movement, that motion that that LV has and those rattles, it just pisses the fish off. They attack it. So, and all the fish does too. So the thing is, fish can come up to your jig and peck at the head or the skirt. Just to kind of like because a fish don't have hands, so to a fish the mouth is like its hands, right? So if it's curious or wants to check something out, it may come up and barely nub your lure or check it out, and then if you feel that and set the hook, right, boom. But if it does that to an LV five hundred, basically a lure with rattle traps, and it nicks the side of that LV, and then you you're gonna you're gonna jack that fool, you're gonna get them. It might be a hook on the outside of the mouth, so it won't be tournament, you know, worthy. But, I mean, you'll get that fish. And then the confidence, you'll start being able to feel those little tiny, little tiny taps. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little tip or trick for today. But uh, I was excited to point out when you notice the tarantulas are out, if you're out in the countryside, that means – False spawn can be on. Crawdads are spawning around the same time that the tarantulas are. 
So if you're seeing the tarantulas, it's a good time to assume that the 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 crawdads, the underwater spiders, are doing the same thing, right? So they're out and about, just like the tarantulas are walking around. The crawdads are down there doing their thing, looking for. It. So jigs, slower moving crawdad trailer, and uh, hang on, you know, a little bang spray might help. Uh, crawdad scent right now. And also, they're still, like I said, bait fish. So if you're on a school or you see a school of bait fish or you see bass on a school of bait, get on them. Um, you can get them that way too. So fish finder is really important this time of year. But if you're not seeing them on the fish finder and you're not seeing them schooled up, that's because they're doing what I'm saying. They're pushing up really shallow. <clears throat> Been running co-poly line on my jig and crankbait rods. Love the sensitivity and super strong. Yeah, co-polymer is a good line. It's like a mix between the two, basically, kind of best of both worlds. It's like a mono-coated fluoro or fluoro-coated mono or whatever it is. It's like a mixture of the two. But um, I tend to... I don't know. I like fluoro for its sensitivity and its castability, and then um, my my paranoia of fish being line shy, and so like I don't like using anything that's overly visible. I just really don't like braid, to be honest. Uh, there's, I mean, unless I'm frogging and punching or something, I just don't have um, a big fancy for something with zero stretch um and i get paranoid how much fishing i've done in my life i get i so i've so seen for sure that fish can be braid line shy so i don't know man i just or at least in my opinion i don't you know one guy's got braid the other guy's got floral and the guy with braid catches one fish all day we're doing the same damn thing i don't know how many trips i've seen that happen at a clear lake um especially during the winter um, where they just don't want nothing to do with it, you know, or when you got to fish really slow and finesse, stuff like that. I just, I don't know, not my cup of tea. But uh, the Delta braid comes in handy a lot. At the Delta also comes in handy when you're pond fishing or, or if you're in a lake, so like the East Coast and guys over on the East Coast, right, Funkin' CT, RC Creative, all you guys over there, if you're dealing with lakes that aren't quite like the ones here, like McClure, Don Pedro, where they're three, 400 feet Sierra Nevada lakes that are dammed off, right? And you make these giant, deep, rocky reservoirs. Um, if you've got more of a shallow, silty bottom where plants can grow, you know, braids kick ass for fishing in grass and hydrilla. When you really want to get a rip, you know, you're using a, a rip bait and you really want no stretch and zero forgive, you know, then you just have to make sure you check your uh, drag or you have the proper size hooks and O-rings on. So when you do, because you will eventually, no matter how bad you suck at fishing or how good you are, just by luck alone, if you do it enough, you're going to get somewhere near a double digit. It might be a seven or an eight. But you don't want your first pig to get off because it straightens your hooks or it breaks your O-ring or snaps your hooks off. But your line was fine, right? Because that'll really suck. Um, and then when they jump and throw the hook, they do that with fluoro, braid, mono. If they're going to throw the hook, they're going to throw the hook. And in my opinion, um, when you rip too big of a hole in their face, you they easily throw the hook. For example... Um, I was using uh, jigs for a long time at night and stroking a lot of fish and some mondos too, but I lost like 50% of them. So I did two different things. I kind of did more of a lean in and a real hook set and um, I didn't reel so fast. And when they come to jump, I just kind of gave them a little bit of pause and kind of leaned into them a little bit and reeled slower. And then, and then as they jumped, I had a little wiggle room if I needed to lean back instead of being like this already, you know, and losing a ton of my fish. Even when I try to dip my rod down into the water, um, you know, it's, it's, you lose them when they jump usually, in my opinion, because see what I do here is I fish mud or rocky lakes and I don't use weed guards. So I jack a jaw when I set the hook, wow. 
And I've watched my fish come in with giant gashes across the part of their face that's not very thick. You know, if the hook doesn't grab into gristle or some, it pops into the, the, the lip, but it's got some play. It'll rip right through all of that, especially when you do it on the hook set and you're so violent. So um, I've learned my lesson and, and did a lot better with that. So Floro is my kind of, I think out of all of them, it's my favorite line. Um, and it's my multi-purpose line. Although there are times I like to use mono. Uh, if I know I'm after monsters at the Delta with a square bill, I throw mono on my, on my stuff when I'm throwing a crankbait at the Delta. Um, that's one of them. Some certain top water I might, you know, but I like to have a little bit less stretch on that too, especially long casts. So if you're a long cast fisherman, you don't want much stretch. If you're an up close and in your face fisherman, you want to have a little bit of forgiveness. It's like if you're pitching and flipping and you're cranking and doing stuff near stuff where you're going to get viciously hit, you're going to hook that fish and then you're going to get them into the boat, you want like mono or something with a little stretch. But if you're bombing a, a long cast and a fish hits from 60, 80 yards out, you know, like a football touchdown pass, you know, and at the end of the line you get hit, you got going to have a lot of leverage. So the that braid or floral will help. So it also depends on your style of fishing too. And I don't know. Again, I don't go reading. Shoot, I might spout stuff on my karong on, but for my – like the way I like to fish, you know, that's why I do what I do. You were not prepared for your DD, huh? It's a black Chinese guy. So, so been running cold poly. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Somebody on Facebook bought a dozen of Lillian's pretzels. So whoever it was, thank you very much. I'm going to buy some too. Those look really good. So I like having, uh, we got, we got an awesome group here, supportive people on Facebook, the YouTube channel, uh, Instagram. So I'm Sambo 209 on Instagram, Samuel Matthews on Facebook. So we do a lot of cool stuff and there's a lot of good people in the community and the fishing community to help out. So whoever did that. Awesome. Thank you very much. If you're watching, if not, and you're watching this later, thank you. And to everybody else watching, thanks for watching and hanging out with me on this fine Wednesday night. Happy hump day. I hope everybody has a great week. So we're going to have a good time. I think, like I said, we're going to go about another hour, finish this bad boy off tonight. I'm going to go jump on my other channel where I can rant and rave about some crap. So if you're interested in following all that, jump over on Common Sense Talks. Smash that subscribe button and watch out. I'm going to be live over there here in a bit. But for tonight, I'm excited. I hope these little tips and tricks help out. Hope you guys get out there, smash a monster, you know, try to fish a little shallower right now because this is going to be one of those best windows for it before winter fishing comes and you're going to need to exclusively fish deep. You can fish shallow in the winter too. They'll still be there. This is going to, you're going to get more largemouth than spotted bass. The fish are going to come more few and farther in between. So, You'll catch instead of 30, 40, 50 fish a day, you might catch 10 or 12, but you catch 10 or 12, two to four or five pound bass. It's going to be, you know, you can have a good time in the winter doing that. You can go around and chuck jigs from one foot down and, uh, and, and kill them in the winter time, still fishing shallow, especially doing it midday and after when the rocks have a chance to build up some heat from the solar energy, from the sun, from radiant energy. The water right around that will be just a degree or two warmer, and that makes all the difference in the world. Some of these largemouth will come up and sun and hang out in the sun in the winter. They'll do some weird stuff. So um, the fishing can be tough in the winter for sure. So right now you should be able to pound a ton of spotted bass along with some nice largies up shallow. So uh, that means anything from 25 up, uh, 20 feet up. So I'd start in one inch of water and work. Um, man, awesome. 12 each, total of 48. Good job. <clears throat> I use Seaguar Red Label on everything except mono or braid top water. I'm about in the same boat with you there, 209 Bassin. It's about how I feel. 
that DD was on eight pound mono and a one o mosquito hook. Yep. So it gave you a little bit of forgiveness. Um, so with the eight pound mono and that one hot mosquito hook, you're lucky you dug into that fish. But I know where you were at and, and what you were doing. So you were fine because of the depth. But if you were fishing like that in uh, the winter, you know, but you're using eight pounds so the diameter of the line's real thin. You're going to have, you know, you should still be fine digging into them with that. Um, mono worked fine. The only thing about mono is it floats. So like in the winter time, it's less of a go-to lure. It'll create your lure to have a little more buoyancy than you want. Although sometimes that might be the trick with your uh, drop shot, you know, get it to flow a little bit, kind of sink slower. So if you're using like say a one or foot or two, three foot leader in the winter time, believe it or not, sometimes we use a five, six foot leader um, in the fall and winter. If we're on a drop shot bite and they're off the bottom, but they're kind of just, you know, not too, not too aggressive, that's a killer tactic. And then sometimes, say you're using just a 10 inch or eight inch lead or whatever, sometimes that bite comes when you're hopping that thing along and you stop and then you lower your tip and you let your drop shot lure just sink. That's when you get bit. Well, sometimes a little trick here using mono will almost make that drop shot lure suspend. And just slowly sink. And that sometimes can be a really cool uh, trick, but it just depends. So sometimes in the wintertime, I'll roll one with mono and one with floral, but I haven't done that in like psh, six, five, six years maybe. When I was like drop shot king and I was drop shot and all the time, I was drop shot. I got an eight and a half pounder out of McClure like seven years ago or so, six, seven years ago. Um, drop shotting in 35 feet of water got a got an eight and a half pound large mouth in uh, late november early december something like that it was maybe mid-december wasn't christmas i had i was uh, my one of my last trips in my boat before i sold it i sold my boat it was just starting to give me issues it was real old i bought it for like four grand and i fished out of it for like three and a half years four years like hardcore just trashed this boat and it was a cheap used boat when i got it and after four years of going through me that poor girl was ragged so i sold her you know and the last uh, second to last trip out i kid you not eight and a half pounder on the drop shot so that was cool but yeah seaguar is a good line i like seaguar <clears throat> Definitely roll with Seagar. <clears throat> oh man. Thank you guys and gals for hanging out and watching and chilling with me tonight. I know not everybody can always hang out the whole show and not everyone can make it. So I appreciate you guys. I like, you know, being able to do this and uh, give back. So I can't wait. Next week we have our giveaway coming. So don't forget to, uh, you know, make sure your notification bell is checked. And it'll be probably midweek or uh, late next week. So we'll have our November giveaway. My birthday is this November. And um, I'm hoping the boat gets out of the shop in time to do my birthday trip. If not, I'll kind of save it. And we'll use my birthday trip for like spawn. And, and, and uh, you know, my buddy, one of my best friends, or my best friend, his birthday is right like in the middle of spawn. So maybe it'd be cool to try to head out to Clear Lake or something in like April or something, um, April or May. Hey, hey, you early tonight. Yep, I jumped on early. Thanks for watching. I was telling everybody um, I wanted to, I jumped on early. I had a cool uh, tips and tricks. We'll, we'll recap it in a nutshell. If you guys want to go back and rewatch it, you can. But long story short is when you see the tarantulas out, that means you know that also the crawdads are out. So the bass should be moving shallow. Mother Nature is going through a second spawn right now. 
Um, not So the fish will be going through what's called a false spawn. So they'll be moving up shallow and doing their thing, but they will not lay eggs. The, the, the female doesn't have the eggs in her belly, but they'll go through a lot of the same routines. Not all of the fish, but some of them will. And um, a lot of them will pull up shallow due to water temps and stuff right now. So that's where everything's going to head. Um, the lakes are also either when you get rain, talking about being in a wet year, instead of draining, they should be either kind of maintaining a stasis or either raising a little bit, in which case the fish should move up. So fall spawn, crawdad spawn, and all that tells you fish a little shallower, throw the jig. And one of the keys that can dial you in on that is if you haven't found it out yet, you're fishing, you're struggling, they disappear on the fish finder, and you start to see the tarantulas running across the road, and it's kind of right about Halloween is when you want to start thinking about switching from maybe an LV500 blade bait to start throwing a jig. I mean, it's good to always have a jig on all year round, but the, the fish should be pulling up shallower right now. So that was my uh, little tips and tricks in a nutshell from earlier, <clears throat> and I was telling people I think what I want to do tonight is I've got a lot of stuff I want to talk about, and I don't want to talk about that stuff on my Common Sense Fishing channel. So if anybody's interested, go check out Common Sense Talks. That's where I'll be yapping later tonight. So we're going to get off here probably around like 7.30, 7.45, and then jump on to Common Sense Talks and run that one until 9 or so. So, um, and if you guys want to talk fishing on that one too, you can always ask or just yap at me. But um, I'm going to be ranting and raving about stuff that I don't want on my fishing channel. So, yada, yada. <clears throat> I don't know. You guys seen the last two? I put out a video of a spider crossing the road, and it's already, like, one of my most uh, most watched videos. It's crazy. It's like the video of the little tarantula walking across the roads already got, like, like 1400 1500 views there 1300 i don't know let's go check it out and uh <laughs> it's weird it's like i would have never thought that just a regular old tarantula walking across the road would get uh it's 1300 and some change so <laughs> and i just put it out there that's too funny <clears throat> So anyways, how are you guys this fine Wednesday night? Anybody got any awesome plans? Um, me? Just going to work. Um, son's got a, a soccer game on Saturday, and uh, I might fish with somebody Sunday. Uh, Friday, um, I, I've... Uh, I've got an HVAC call to run Friday, and other than that, I might go fishing from the shore Friday. And I'm hoping the boat gets, you know, I get a call on, like, what it's going to cost or, you know, that he's getting started at least. And then hopefully the boat won't be but a few weeks at the most, but we'll see. It could be longer. So that's in hiatus. So no. But we got a trout video coming up, so i got to release that. And I've got a bunch of one fish trips that I'm going to share with you guys. So we're going to cut that footage out. So you guys will start seeing a couple more videos shoot out. Then I'm going to go back to some whiteboard stuff, take you guys on Google Earth and uh, break some things down, do a couple more of those videos um, and see how you guys and gals like them. You know, try to break down some spots and also show you like, hey, like any old lake, like how to find where the hell the dang fish are at this time of year. Like if you've never been to the lake. Or how to pattern a leg, stuff like that. We'll start doing some videos like that. Um, I'm also going to do some videos on some lure modifications. Um, I don't really have the camera and like to get up and close and do like a good knot tying video, stuff like that. You know, because those are what honestly just stupid stuff like real, real reviews, gear reviews, like knot tying videos, hook videos, those get a lot of views. Um, I'm not really in it to do. I'm I'm really just trying to help and give honest to God tips and tricks and share fun times with you guys. So we'll see how it goes. 
You'll be at New Maloney Sunday, huh? Well, get them. I hope you the best of luck. And right now, it should be killer out there. So I'm assuming New Maloney should be on fire with the rain and water coming in. Head up river, fish near some rocks, start shallow, throw like a Ned rig, throw a jig, um, LV 500s if there's not a lot of wood. Um, if you find them deeper, slow rolling an A rig can just destroy them at New Maloney's. So I love that lake. And I catch a lot of monster spotted bass out of there. I got a couple of really good areas up by Coyote Creek and Black Creek. Um, you can fish all the way up uh, where the water's coming in. It's going to be really good right now. Uh, Angels Creek might be okay, but I usually head there for like spawn time. I go in the back of Angels Creek for spawn. And then uh, the dam, along the dam, the rock wall, all the way going dang near towards Angels Creek for me has just always been good and fun. So. I love New Maloney's. Plus, nearby Hutt Tuttle Town, there's a bunch of dirt islands and just islands that don't. There's there's some that are uh, not got a lot of structure on it, but what structure there is holds a lot of fish. Is whatever's on that side of the lake will congregate over there. So there's some islands and areas and rock piles over bound by Tuttleton and headed towards uh, the um, dam, but not necessarily South Lake or whatever. They're just real good too. So get them. Hope you the wish you the best of luck out there, Racho. Go tear them up. Long time, long time viewer there. Huh. Most of my guys are, I guess, guys and gals. I thank all the women fishermen, fisher women, and women that watch too. So shout out to to everybody. So thank you guys for watching the channel. Now. Uh, I think I was asking you guys. Any, I think okay. So Racho will be out at New uh, New Maloney's on Sunday, but anyone got any plans? I think tomorrow is uh, is it? It's Veterans Day. So anybody got plans for Veterans Day? Is it Veterans Day or what the hell day is it tomorrow? Well, I'm gonna feel like a fool if I missed which holiday it is. <clears throat> Sweet. Okay. Thanks, brother. Okay. And now, uh, sorry. I just had a buddy bought a bunch of those uh, pretzel sticks for my daughter. So I was just acknowledging. <clears throat> Yeah, Veterans Day. That's what I thought. <clears> there <throat> was a burnout there for a minute. I had to double check. I'm like, <laughs> did I just screw up? Oh, well. If I screwed up, I screwed up. I'll admit it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure I knew what holiday it was. <laughs> Dang it, Sam. Leave it alone, right? Another little tip just for your own health. Try to remember when it's winter, you go fishing, you don't feel like you need any water. You don't sweat, you don't get hot, but your body needs it. So try to stay hydrated, drink a lot of water in the winter time, summer, all year, you know, try to make sure in the summer you're reminded you're sweating, it's hot, it tastes good, it quenches your thirst. In the winter time, you might not even realize it when you're thirsty. And another little thing is, is when you're thirsty, it can also um, double as hunger. So like your stomach, your feelings, when it's not hot outside, you're not sweating, you're not really like, I need some liquid. And, and you can feel like, oh, like I'm hungry. I need something to eat. And you might have just ate. So water is super important. So I know everybody knows that, but just figured I'd say something. That's so why I'm over here drinking a bunch of water 
on my Niner Cup because uh, obviously, I don't know if you guys can tell, I still got a little nasal congestion. This damn sickness technically been like eight days now I've had this cold. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> you can hear it in my coughs like a little wet. I hope I don't have like walking pneumonia. I haven't had uh, major signs like that, so I think I'm fine. It's just weird. I haven't really had one take this long to go away before, or it's been a long time. And I tested like a bunch of times, tested negative for COVID. So I'm like, well, yeah, got a cold. So I, I've been avoiding everywhere, everybody too. I haven't been hanging out with much people, you know. I missed all last week. <laughs> so thank you guys and gals for putting up with me when I miss them. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, I try to make sure that we entertain, we educate, and we have a good time on the channel here. And you guys make half of all this, or you're all of it, not half of it, but, you know, the, the interaction's great because you guys comment and then I'm able to interact with your guys' comments. So it, I think that's a lot more fun than me just like yapping at the screen. The goal though is to grow the channel where there's so many people in the chat talking that in order to get my attention, people will have to super chat kind of, and then I can read the super chats at the end, kind of like the way Tim Pool does it. Also a way to support the channel um, and I'll always stop and try to read the chat, but when it's flying, you know, if there's a lot of people in here and there's a lot of comments and there's not much you can do, it just keeps going, but it's hard. I don't know. Fishing channels. I don't think they really blow up that much. You know, you can, they, they get big, right. And they get really successful, but I don't know too many live streaming fishing channels. Like there's a uh, Mark's fishing. If you guys uh, watch his stuff. Uh, he's more like a kayak and a shore fisherman who live streams himself fishing. So pretty cool. Um, he's always out fishing and live streaming. So wherever he's fishing, he's live streaming. Smart, I guess, right? You do them both. You, make, you can make videos, plus you can live stream. But I think he's more of like consistently always live streaming, you know, um, and more so than putting out videos. Well, I try to live stream every you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I like to put videos out at least once, twice a week if I can, if not more. And uh, this is more of a channel upload, you know, an uploading channel where I try to upload cool content for you guys and gals plus live streams, like a 50-50. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's hurting me or helping me. If any internet gurus in the house, let me know in the comments below or, uh, you know, hey, what you think's going on. But yeah, um, we're growing a little bit, so I'd like to see us break the 2,000 mark. When we hit 2,000 subs, I know for sure I'm going to give away probably another rod and reel combo, and we'll do like maybe a G Loomis or a St. Croix or whatever. We'll do something nice. So I've been kind of stuck in the mid 15, 1600s forever now, so we'll see if we can bump that thing up and get the channel growing. So one of the biggest things you guys can do to support me is share the videos, um, especially if they're ones you like. So if it's a live stream you like, share it. If it's not, um, you know, but you liked some of my uploads, like, you know, you like this or that, share it to your Facebook. Ask people to join. Never uh, close mouth, don't get fed. That's why I try to ask every once in a while. But short of begging, though, right? You know? <laughs> hey, everybody. So... Oh man, good old, good old dirty bassin, good old supporter right there. So gotta love that guy, like family now. Basically, there's a couple of you guys basically like family to me. Ain't that pretty cool, man? Just been on here a little over two years, and there's a couple of dudes that I've met that are genuine and nice people. I met a lot of actually cool people. But uh, there's a couple that, you know, we stay in contact and we fish a lot with each other. Or we yap and we talk on social media, messenger and whatnot. So always good to make friends. You're never too old, right? That's one thing. A lot of us go through our life and, like, we make all these friends in childhood. And then we get older and we reconnect with some of the ones maybe that we didn't like or that, like, we liked and then we fell out or people we were acquaintances with. But how often 
Does a grown adult? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. What do you guys think? What do you? What, how about you guys? How often does a grown adult go and meet new people that are genuinely going to become friends in their life, right? Where it's not just like you meet new people, sure, but where you actually just start a conversation with somebody and you end up like getting numbers or like you know each other or something or you meet each other and then you end up like making friends on Facebook and you end up, right, and it develops into an actual friendship. That doesn't happen very often, I would say, in my experience. And I do, actually, I'm pretty open and easygoing, but it seems like when I look at other people, most people are surrounded with their, their friends or either business, really good business acquaintances slash friends, or people they've known all their life, right, or family. So cheers to good friends. And meeting good friends and new people, that's also great. You know, what fishing's awesome. You know, I'll just walk up to a random fisherman. That's just me. I know it was kind of this kind of, it could be disrespectful, but I was just that way as a kid. I just walk up to people like, hey, you catch any? What are you catching them on? Oh, dude, catching bass, catching trout, anything big? You know, I'm just interested. So not like I'm going to sit there and fish your spot or use your exact lure. But it's good to get some information. And not only that, I'm just social. So I'll go, yeah, I'm not afraid. Someone barks at me, okay, I guess you don't want to chill or talk. Fine. <laughs> you know, there's enough bad people out there, but there's good people too. So mm, I'm sipping this water like I'm sipping some drink or something. It's funny. It's like hard to drown to down such a big old cup. Mm. Now she's gone. <clears throat> All right, folks. <sighs> oh, goodness, we lose everybody. See, that's why I try. I try not to look at the people count because then you see how many people are hanging out with you. You get a little depressed or sad. I go, oh, man, there's only four people on tonight. Um, we had like seven or eight on, I think, at one time, but. Hey, we've had 30 people on at a time here before, so it would be cool to get even more than that. The bigger, the better. Let's go to channel. Also, too, I sometimes don't even pop on till 7 o'clock at night, so sometimes I'm on pretty late. So I know it's like I'm technically an hour early, and I'm really like only 15 minutes into my traditional show. <laughs> so, but hey. Uh, if you're sticking around, thanks for sticking around and listen, listening to me yap. I've got some hopeful plans to get somebody on here this Friday and uh, get a chair for them. And we'll start having a conversation about fishing and all kinds of stuff and what this person may or may not have learned over the last few years. You know, anything that, that he or she wants to help you guys with. So we'll see how it goes. Um, Trying to get Jeff on here for Friday. We'll see. I don't know if he can make it, but if he could, that'd be great. If not, I was also my brother would probably be down to come chat and uh, and talk, but uh, that would probably be best for common sense talks where we can talk about all kinds of stuff. Me and my brother can rant for days, <clears throat> but he's not the biggest fisherman. So, and a side note, I was also thinking about dragging my son on here and sitting him down to talk with us. And talk about how how it is being like a kid when your dad like loves fishing so much, and do I ever overly pressure him? And uh, how does he feel about it? What does he want to learn and get out of fishing? You know, and maybe uh, get another perspective, and you know, spend some time with my son, let you guys meet him. And uh, for those of you who may not have, I was just thinking about it, a couple different ideas. One of these days. We'll grow the channel to where people actually want to come and be on here, right? And they're calling me like, dude, can I come get on your live stream? Be like, yeah, all right. Looks like I have an opening. <laughs> you know, like a Tim Pool, Joe Rogan style, right? All right, one guy can have pipe dreams, can he? Don't, don't be too mad at me. A guy can wish. <laughs> get a cross Joe Rogan with tactical bass and 
where I'm like, like uh, Alex Jones on the channel. We're talking about interdimensional aliens, but like fishing too. <laughs> no, that'd be cool. But yeah. Anyways, it's like I'm super itching to talk about like what's going on in the world, the news, uh, vaccine mandates, Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, just the crazy stuff going on in Australia, crime rates, what's happened locally, a shooting, stabbing, road rage, a couple of things i seen on the freeway, a lot of crazy topics I'm going to talk about tonight on Common Sense Talks, if you guys get a chance. We're going to be shutting this one down and heading over there, so if you're getting here late and you're like, hey, what's going on, you know, you'll know why I'm jumping off. Sometimes, like I said, I'm only on at like seven. So some people are like, what the hell? You know, what are you on so early for? You know, and we get some people that don't show up until that latter half, like eight o'clock, you know, 745, eight o'clock. So if you show up and uh, the channel's already been live streamed and you're like, what the hell? You know, hopefully you, you fast forward or you get to this part. And I can direct you over to my other channel, Common Sense Talks. Otherwise, um, for the rest of the night here, we got about 15 minutes or so. So if anybody has any topics they want to talk about, any questions, any fishing stuff that you guys want to talk about, <clears throat> or anything you want to hear me talk about, leave a comment below, um, and I'd be glad to go over it tonight. Otherwise, we'll hang out for a few more minutes. And I might take a little intermission and uh, go head upstairs real quick <clears throat> and uh, get some things prepped for the next show. So I haven't ate dinner yet either, so i got to go grab one of those and bring them down. I think we're having beef stroganoff. Depends on if the wife made it. I got everything all out for her. I've been trying to be super husband and make all the dinner and have everything ready so when she gets home, the food's ready. But sometimes I work until right too late. The last week I've been sick as a dog, and uh, I've succeeded most of the days this week in having dinner on the table ready for the kids and the wife. So uh, this uh, I got off work right in the nick of time, so I brushed up, cleaned up, got ready, and uh, you know set everything out, got the meat out to defrost, and came to do my show. So. I was excited. I wanted to get on here early. I know, like I said, I usually I used to go six to nine. You guys are probably used to seeing me more seven to nine. Um, maybe we should nail that down to a more solid time frame. I just like the guys on the East Coast being able to join in. Um, you know, so it's not so much of a late show. Uh, because if this was a late show, this should be like a comedy show, right? Where we're cracking jokes and talking ish. And uh, this would definitely not jive on my fishing channel, right? We'd be drinking beer and uh, doing all kinds of stuff. Well, I usually do that too, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's why uh, I'm, I got on excited tonight to talk about a bunch of different things. So, you know, it looks like everybody's pretty much done with the fishing conversation for tonight. So thanks for watching, guys and gals. I'm going to sign off, and then I'm going to go get my other channel, Common Sense Talks, ready. Uh, if you're getting here a little late, sorry. I appreciate you guys, everybody, and uh, thanks, you know, either way. Uh, we'll be back on Friday, and also uh, be ready. We're going to have our giveaway coming up um i think november we're gonna do it like not not the 18th i think it should be like either the 17th or the 19th of next week we're gonna have um our november giveaway <clears throat> now i've got something big planned for christmas so all members merry christmas so thank you very much big big thank you to my members I got a very special gift for you guys. All members will receive it uh, this December, so thank you. And um, also, I don't know when it will happen. It might be five or six months. If It, it could be a miracle and happen this or next month. Whenever we hit, I'm doing a verbal announcement now. 
We'll do some announcement on the channel. I might put out a promo video, but I'm not trying to buy people's like subscriptions. If you like the channel and you want to subscribe, please do so. And on this channel, we have lots of cool giveaways, but that's not the purpose. The purpose of the giveaways is to give back to the community. And yes, to draw people in a little bit, but it's more to help others um, and also just to, to, to be somebody who's doing something like that. Because someone who wins could be poor, they could be rich, it doesn't matter. It's just in the spirit of, of, of giving back and um, turning people on to fishing. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, we can just grow this into something just much, much more awesome. I would love, I would love to see us, like I said, taking autistic kids fishing taking disabled people and disabled kids fishing and adults fishing, taking people that have been injured, hurt, wounded vets, taking just whatever, anybody and everybody, taking them fishing, you know, having good times, sharing fun with them, buying fishing stuff for people that can't afford it, helping people get their fishing license, all kinds of crazy cool stuff. I've always said it, like, uh, I would love to hit, like, if we hit like half a million, give a boat away or something, just crazy. Just do it just because. Because obviously if I'm at that point, I'll be monetized enough. I'll be doing okay or getting a little bit, right? So why not, again, give back to the community? So the bigger the channel, the bigger the stuff would be that I'd give away. And that's just me, right? I wouldn't like, like keep it and be all like, you know, I mean, because, of course, you get paid, you get things going on, uh, might get sponsors and stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, that would be really cool. I would be that fool that would be trying to give a bass boat away or something. But, like I said, you got pros with, like, Brian Latimer. Dudes like that only got 80, 90,000, 100,000. You got guys that are really good at bass fishing, and they still they just don't have the biggest channels. And they are actually good bass fishermen or they're pros. Some of the, you know, they don't, it's not like the content, they may not be pumping out like a video every other day, um, but still. And then you got guys like Tactical Bass and with dang near half a million. You know, you got Lake Fork guy and you got the Demolition Ranch dudes, Guggen Squad guys. So Bama Bass, Tide Pig Patrol. There's some really big fishing YouTube channels out there. Uh, so it can be done. Um, it's just finding the right niche. And hopefully people out there find this channel, like the channel, and hopefully I'm producing content that's worthy of being like that because you can't buy your way to the top and you can't fake your way, right? And it's not even the top, but just to being successful. But if I ever did, you better believe that uh, I'd be like Mr. Beast, man. I'd be giving, I'd like to give back. And I do that as a little channel now. So, you know, with a, as a guy who lives almost paycheck to paycheck and, you know, I don't, I don't have sponsors giving all this crap. Well, I pay for it with my, with my own hard earned money and I love to, to give back. So anyways, we've got uh, two $50 gift cards that should be um, going out. You know, hopefully I would like to see the guys and give them to them in person. We got keeping it real and um, we got Jeff Garcia. So if we can get those to them in person, if not, you know, we'll just mail them out by this weekend or something. But um, we got those two winners. And like I said, November's giveaway will be either the 17th or the 19th. And then we got a really big one during Christmas. Now, what I was rambling and getting at is uh, – when we hit 2,000, we'll do like a really nice combo set, you know, something that's really clean, maybe a G. Loomis or a uh, St. Croix set or something like that or Shimano DC or something, you know, digital reel with a nice rod, give you a real nice pair set up. Um, maybe let the, let the winner choose baitcaster versus finesse or spinning. And they can't choose size, action, or any of that on the bait caster. And the same thing on the finesse. But they can choose which one they want. And then we'll go get them like a really nice, you know, that's that would be something I'd love to do. When we hit 2,000, 
So for the five people that are on tonight, I don't think it's like we're going to, you know, but I'm giving you guys a warning now, like a, a heads up. So if you can share the videos, if we can get the channel there, you know, that'd be great. But you guys know, like I said, I don't do this. Uh, I don't try to buy people's subscriptions. That's not cool. Just want to do good work and give back. So just like these toy drives, I'll help as many kids as we can. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you guys want, we're going to be uh, jumping over to Common Sense Talks. I'm going to be talking about Kyle Rittenhouse, supply chains. We're going to be talking about inflation, Bitcoin, money, finances, we're going to be talking about just the crazy things that have been going on news cycle-wise. We're going to be talking about sports. Uh, we, we're going to be talking about predictions for, like, who's going to the Super Bowl. Uh, we'll be talking about a lot of cool stuff. There's just a lot of things I wanted to yap about, so I was excited to let everybody know. Hey, go check that out if not. Otherwise, next Friday – or, sorry, not next, this Friday, we'll be back on for our, another live stream, Common Sense Fishing. Uh, we'll be uh, talking about some more tips and tricks, and also uh, I'm going to be doing hopefully some fishing uh, in between uh, now and then Friday morning. I'll be up at Lake McClure fixing a heater, so um, I should get a chance to do some bass fishing Friday. Uh, a trout video should be coming out soon, so all right, we got a lot of things coming. Thank you guys and gals for watching. Smash that like button if you haven't already. And uh, thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. And we'll see you guys and gals on Friday or later tonight on Common Sense Talks. Thanks for watching.